after taking a detour to Vault 101 to finally close the book on that chapter in our life. We must now continue our search for the Gek. While at the Citadel, we met with Scribe Rothschild, who gave us access to an ancient vault tech computer that they had. There we discovered that only one vault in the Capital Wasteland had a Gek, Vault 87. Scribe Rothschild told us where the vault was, but he warned us. The reason the Brotherhood hasn't explored that vault yet is because the very entrance to the vault is emanating more radiation than any other place in the wasteland. Brotherhood soldiers can't even get near to it without dying. And so he recommended we find another path. A path through lamplight caverns. But let's see exactly how true this story is. If we approach the location of Vault 87 from the north, we eventually come upon a warning sign. Danger. Very high radiation levels. Cleanup in progress. The annual dose limit may be reached in only half a second of exposure. So this place was emanating radiation even before the bombs dropped. Ignoring the sign, we can continue southwest and head up a small ramp. Cresting the hill, we begin to pick up rads, taking some rad X to bump up our radiation resistance, and wearing a full suit of power armor, we can try to creep closer, but soon the rads skyrocket. 40, 60, 100 rads per second. Then, as we stand atop what must be the entrance to the vault, we succumb to radiation poisoning. Man, Scribe Rothschild wasn't even kidding. But perhaps there's another way to get to the entrance. Heading around to the other side of Vault 87, we can try to approach from the south. We see that someone has erected fortifications, ruined cars, and big metal spikes. But we see a path up to the north, and then, super mutants. And super mutant overlords. What are they doing here at Vault 87? Leaping down to the ground, we can walk northeast towards our Pip Boy map marker. But we don't get very far before. We can't even get close enough to see the door. What's over there? If we were somehow immune to radiation, we would find suitcases and human skeletons piled outside the door to Vault 87. Here we find a woman wearing a radiation suit, which clearly didn't work for her, and we find Radex and Radaway scattered around her body. The door to Vault 87 is inaccessible, so even if we got through this radiation, we wouldn't be able to enter the vault this way. And there's no item in the game that can protect us. Even donning a radiation suit and taking Radex still puts us at 822 rads per second, right outside the door to Vault 87. For some reason, however, dog meat does not seem to be affected by the radiation. If we stand just south of the entrance to Vault 87, we can ask dog meat to go scrounge up some chems for us. If we do, he runs right for the door. And after a moment, he comes back with some chems. Rinse and repeat. In this way, we can get all the chems that we know are scattered around the body. But to find an entrance to Vault 87, we must take a different path. Rothschild suggested we travel through Little Lamplight. Thankfully, we've already been to Little Lamplight. We've met all the children who live here, and we completed their quests. We are now fast friends, and so I'm sure they'll help us. If you missed my series on Little Lamplight and Paradise Falls, you can watch it by clicking here. Heading inside Lamplight Caverns, there is one path that we never explored in my previous episode, and that is to take the path towards Murder Pass. Heading that way, we find the path guarded by Princess. You're my hero, ma'am. I want to be just like you when I grow up. I really need to get to Vault 87. Do you know the way? We don't go there. It's bad back there. Ask Mayor if you really want to know. 
so Princess won't open the gate for us until we get permission from Mayor McCready. We now have to track down Mayor McCready, who's likely wandering around the Great Chamber. How do I have to solve your bullshit problem today? I really need to get into Vault 87. Do you know the way? It's not safe, even for someone as brave as you. There's monsters back there. Monsters? What monsters? The big ones. You know, the ones that sort of look like people, except they're all wrong. Oh, great. More super mutants. But here? In Lamplight Caverns? Well, in that case, forget it. Yeah, whatever. Actually, do you know the way to get there or not? Yeah, I do. It's through Murder Pass. Not a real safe way to go, but it's the only door that works. That's the only way? It's the only way that works, yeah. The other door hasn't worked since before I was here. Computer's busted and not even Joseph can make it work. Where can I find Joseph? I'm the mayor, not a babysitter, Mungo. Beats me. Maybe he's back there by the door. Fuck if I know. Okay then. In that case, I want to use Murder Pass to reach Vault 87. You sure about that? It's scary in there. Even I don't like going in there, and I'm really brave. Oh, scary. Well, on second thought, never mind. Okay, don't worry. I won't tell anyone else you chickened out. Hey, I'm not chicken. Let's go to Murder Pass. Yeah, I'm sure. Okay, if you say so. Come on, let's get the gate open for you, Mungo. With that, Mayor McCready races towards Murder Pass, and when we arrive, he opens the gate. With the gate open, we can walk down the path until we reach the door to Murder Pass. On the other side of the door, we can step forward, and we find a big stack of sandbag barricades and human skeletons littering the ground. But these skeletons all look small. The path continues to the north, and we see a split off to the west. But looking west, we see super mutants walking across a footbridge. We can take care of them now. We'll start by following the path north. This leads to a large room where we see more sandbag barricades and even more human skeletons. And another super mutant. The skeletons we find here must be the remains of some of the original children who became stranded here in Lamplight Caverns. We recall from the lore we got in Little Lamplight that the parents of the children all died when they went above ground to look for help. It was only after the adults had left that the children explored deeper into the cave and found Vault 87. At that time, they were even able to communicate with the vault dwellers on the other side of the vault door. But those vault dwellers turned them away, saying that they were already dead. It must have been some time after that, that super mutants appeared here, forcing the original lamplighters to set up all of these defenses, where many of them died, and the survivors retreated from Murder Pass. In this shack, we find some railway spikes on a bed, one grenade box, and an ammunition box. Moving out of the shack, we see a ramp off to the right, and behind a privacy screen, we find a toilet, an ammunition box, and a copy of Tales of a Junktown Jerky Vendor. This room continues to the northeast. After looting the mutant corpses, we can bypass a large rubble pile that we saw upon entry and continue down a tunnel to the north. We round a corner until we find a gap in the rock wall to the right, and someone had tried to block up this gap with more sandbags. Here we find a sign, Keep Out, Not Part of Tour and it has a Vault-Tec logo. But just then... So this is where the super mutants were coming from. They were coming from the direction of the Vault, and they broke through this barrier that the original Lamplighters tried to erect. Before we head down this path, we can see what's to the southwest. At the end of this path, we find a large chamber with elevated structures and more mutants.
With the mutants dead, we can head back up to those elevated structures to see what we missed up there. And with the existence of these structures, which look a lot like the ones the lamplighters built in the Great Chamber, we can deduce that little lamplight used to span all the way here into Murder Pass. They must have lived here for quite some time before it was invaded by the super mutants. In the first hut, we find an easy locked first aid box, two more unlocked first aid boxes, and one toolbox. We see a pathway leading to another elevated hut. Here we find two ammo boxes and two first aid kits. Next to this, we see a blasted out terminal, but it's really weird, even though the screen is gone. We see a vault tech logo. There must be a uh, vault tech lunchbox shoved in there, but we can't seem to access it. Heading down to the ground floor, we can walk past a campfire. There are many nooks and crannies in this great room, but none of them have any loot. In the middle of the room, we see a bunch of human skeletons. To continue, we can take a ramp up to the southwest. At the top of the ramp, we find a dead super mutant. And then we see that bridge. These are the super mutants we killed at the entrance to Murder Pass. Turning left, we pass a pitching machine, go down a path to the very bottom, where we find a copy of U.S. Army 30 Handy Flamethrower Recipes on a table, with two more first aid kits, one of which is locked with a very easy lock, and two more ammo canisters, one of which is locked with an average lock. But this path is a dead end. So turning around, we can cross the bridge, tiptoe around some human skeletons, until we find a tripwire. This tripwire must be connected to the pitching machine we just passed. So we'll disarm this, and at the end of this path, we find ourselves all the way back at the entrance. There's the door back to Little Lamplight. That means, in order to continue, we have to retrace our steps all the way back to that one tunnel with the vault Tech Keep Out sign, the one that the original Lamplighters tried to block up with sandbags. Heading inside, we can loot the corpse of the mutant we killed earlier. Turning around, wow, that's a big stack of sandbags. The path continues north. After a while, we find a split, a path off to the northwest, and a path off to the northeast. Heading northwest first, we see a Brahmin trap, and it's connected to this tripwire on the ground. Disarming this, we can sneak around the Brahmin trap, but at the top, we find a dead end, so there's nothing here. So, turning around, we can sneak around the Brahmin trap, Whoops. Clumsy me. And this time, take the path to the northeast. This leads us down into a lower chamber. We see a pathway to the east and a ramp leading up to the northwest. This ramp is booby-trapped with a tripwire. Disarming the tripwire, we can try to see what it was connected to. Oh, there it is. A fragmentation grenade bouquet hanging from the ceiling. We can disarm this for the grenades. And there's nothing else up here. So, hopping down to this lower area, we can take the path to the east, where we find a super mutant overlord. Well, there goes all my Gatling laser ammunition. I probably would have needed it for the vault, too. Oh, well, looks like we'll depend on alien technology for now. Continuing up the path, we see big metal girders and support structures in the cave wall. And at the end of this path, we see a vault door. Opening the door, we arrive in a supply room. We see a couple of broken terminals, a bunch of sensor modules on a desk, and a shelf filled with supplies. There's a first aid kit, a Nuka-Cola Quantum, a Stealth Boy, a stack of conductors, and three ammo canisters, one of which is locked with an easy lock. When done, we can open the door to the north. This leads to another cave. At the end of this cave tunnel, we can open a wooden door to the reactor chamber. On the other side of the door, we pass through another cave and we complete the quest, picking up the trail. And we begin the quest, finding the Garden of Eden. The path goes up and ends at a door that leads directly into Vault 87. Here we find a pile of human skeletons and bloody pieces of gore. We must remember this scene because this was one of only two ways to enter Vault 87. Remember, Mayor McCready told us that there was another way, but a way that didn't work. To get it to work, we had to find Joseph. To find this other path, we can return to Lamplight Caverns. 
From the Great Hall, we can follow the boardwalks and bridges to the northern side of the chamber. Here we find a lit cave going north. There's a split in the path. The western path leads to a dead end. So turning around, we can follow the northern path until we find a bunch of furniture, some lockers, and scrap partially blocking a pathway to the northwest. Heading inside, we see a big sign. Nothing. Well, then that must mean there must be something. Continuing forward, we pass another vault tech sign, walk around a broken chain link fence to enter a huge chamber. We see an elevated vault tech pod in the northwestern corner of this room. Taking the staircase up, we find a vault tech reactor. We see puddles of blood on the ground leading to a vault 87 door. And just outside this door is an average locked computer terminal. But when we try to access it, we get a message, this terminal is not powered. So this is why we had to go find Joseph. He knows how to power the terminal. Retracing our steps, we can head back to the great chamber of Little Lamplight and walk around until we find Joseph. What's happening? I hear there's a door that doesn't work. Nuh-uh. Door works fine. Computer's broke. Well, maybe not broke, but it sure don't work right. I turned it off because it was just wasting power. Don't you have the password? Nope. Nobody ever wrote it down. And then one day somebody forgot. You know how it goes. And you're supposed to be the smart one? Hey, I am smart, jerk. Can you turn the computer back on? Sure, if you want. Come on, it's over here. With that, Joseph leads us all the way back to the large chamber with the floating vault tech pod. He races inside and flips on the switch to power the terminal. Okay, there you go. The computer is on again. Don't know what good it'll do you. Thanks, Joseph. All right, bye. Now that the terminal is powered, we have to hack this average lock. Once done, we can finally unlock the door. And with the door unlocked, we can enter the reactor chamber. And this way, we also complete the quest, picking up the trail, and begin the quest, finding the Garden of Eden. Both paths lead to the same vault, but they come from different directions. Vault 87 is filled with lore, and we'll explore it in full to figure out exactly what went on here, and to discover why there are so many super mutants here in my next episode. I publish new videos every single week here on my channel, so if you don't want to miss it, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. If you have and you still feel like you're missing out on YouTube notifications, consider following me on Twitter at Oxhorn. I update Twitter manually with every new piece of content that I publish. I have a shirt shop with completely unique designs that you can't find anywhere else. My shirts come in a variety of men's, women's, and children's sizes and in a wide array of colors. You can find them on other products as well, like smartphone cases, pillows, posters, mugs, stickers, prints, etc. So if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming a patron on Patreon or a member here on YouTube. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon with more brand new videos.